Has this ever happened to you? Late nights struggling to edit a video that your computer can barely keep up with? We've all been there. What is a proxy? A proxy file is a version of the original clip that is lower in resolution, bitrate, or codec complexity. Usually it's all three, and we use proxies in order to cut video on lower end hardware, or simply because the capture format is ridiculously large. Computers do get more and more powerful each year, but video formats keep getting bigger and bigger as well. So that 4K raw video you just shot for your latest movie, it'd be a lot easier to edit that in 1080p. Just saying. Now I just mentioned something called codec complexity. Basically, some codecs are more advanced than others, and they take additional processing power to decode and thus edit. Interframe codecs, such as the ubiquitous H.264, are codecs that reconstruct certain frames from neighboring frames. They tend to be more processor intensive. Intraframe codecs, such as ProRes and DNxHD or DNxHR, encode each and every frame as a whole frame, and they don't need to reference neighboring frames to do this. This means your processor can play through the video much faster. Of course, newer intraframe codecs that use an ultra-high resolution will still probably play back slower than an older, lower resolution interframe codec. After all, the format AVC Intra is simply H.264 that only uses intraframes. Intraframe codecs are often regarded as having higher quality images, and while this can be true, it's a bit more complicated than that. Because intraframe codecs encode whole frames, they require a lot more bits to encode the whole video. This is why intraformats are so huge. Interframe codecs save space, and instead reconstruct frames from others. But if they have similar bit rates, an interframe codec could potentially look better, since it has the extra flexibility to encode the image. This is especially true the lower the bit rate is. By far, the easiest way to create proxies is to just shoot on a camera that automatically generates them for you. Some cameras can record lower resolution versions simultaneously that are stored on the same card or a secondary card. You'll still have to attach the proxies in your editor, but this saves you the step of transcoding all your footage, which could potentially take some time. And that brings us to Premiere. Hey, it's what we use in-house, okay? I know there's other options. Creating proxies in Premiere is super easy. Just select on the clips in your bin that you want to create proxies for, right-click, go down to Proxy, and click Create Proxies. A screen will pop up where you can choose your proxy encoding preset, which we'll talk about in a minute, in the destination folder for the proxy encodes. Personally, I prefer to use an automatic proxy subfolder in the same folder as the source clips, but if you want to consolidate all proxies into one place, you can do that too. If you want to easily copy all your footage to an external drive to edit in your coffee shop of choice, you might want to go with that option instead. Click OK, and Media Encoder will fire up. The great thing about this method is that you can begin cutting before your proxies even finish encoding, and Premiere will attach the proxies as they finish. Now, one more thing you do have to do is go into Premiere's Preferences, hit Media, and Enable Proxies. When the proxies finish, you'll likely see the quality of your video drop, but you should be able to scrub through the timeline much faster. If you use this setup, Premiere will actually use the original files when exporting, so you don't need to turn off proxies when you finish your video. Plus, because Premiere knows the specs of the original files, you can still edit with 4K dimensions in mind, even though the proxies are 1080p. Premiere handles the scaling of the timeline for you internally. DaVinci Resolve is becoming a powerful editing tool, but even if you don't edit with it, it's a great program for managing media. After you import your clips into Resolve, you can select the clips you want to encode, go down to File, Media Manager, and a small window will pop up. Go over to the Transcode tab, and you'll have a wide range of encoding profiles to choose from. If you want, you can also use the traditional Delivery tab within Resolve in order to give a base grade to the proxies. Now, make sure that when exporting, that the proxy file names are identical to their source files. If you're sticking with Premiere, go back to the program and select your source files in the bin. Right-click, Proxy, and hit Attach Proxies. Find the folder where DaVinci encoded the proxy files to and choose one. If the file names match, Premiere should be able to detect the remaining proxy files and attach everything in the bin. What profile do I use? 
In general, when using proxies, you want to use a codec that is easier to decode, lower in resolution, and almost certainly lower in bitrate. But this isn't a hard and fast rule. Your computer might be okay with the 1080p resolution as long as it's something like ProRes Proxy. If you don't already have proxies made from a camera, it is also worth considering how long it might take you to transcode everything into a lower quality format. If you're on a strict deadline, you might just have to deal with it. I can tell you firsthand, I've been there. But as for actual profiles, here are some suggestions. For most systems, you're pretty safe using ProRes Proxy, DNX HD Thin Raster, Cineform, or any similar low bitrate, low complexity intraframe codec. If you started in 4K, a 1080p profile is recommended because it's a clean downscale of 50%. Although if you really want to speed things up, you can go down to 720p. Sometimes, especially with raw formats and intraframe codecs with immense bit rates, CPU power isn't necessarily the limiting factor, it's read speed. Solid state drives and connections such as Thunderbolt have helped to alleviate this somewhat, but workstation class storage isn't always an option on the go or on a budget. Your main concern here is bitrate. Again, simply choose a codec that uses a low bitrate, such as ProRes Proxy, and you should have a much easier time reading these files, even off of slower external drives. So that about covers it for proxies. I hope that in the future, when we're all editing and delivering 8K video, that this knowledge still comes in handy, because I have a feeling it will. This is Doug with BH, and I'll see you next time.